this article on theboot.com. Unbelievable 90s country facts you definitely didn't know. Now, some of them, I'm going to know. You're going to know. Eddie's here, by the way. Yeah. Because we're such 90s country mm-hmm. fans. Love it. But it's pretty funny to read some of this stuff. The 90s, uh, I'll read some of what they wrote here. The 90s changed everything about country music. Garth Brooks, Shania Twain, Alan Jackson, George Strait. But it's some of the facts that they share. You ready? Yeah. Keith Urban makes an appearance in the music video for Alan Jackson's 1993 hit Mercury Blues. He was also the road guitarist for Brooks and Dunn prior to becoming Keith Urban. Yeah, yeah, I think he's playing guitar in the video, right? I don't know. I didn't know this. I feel like I've seen this video, and he's one of the guitar players in the video. What I remember most about this was Home Improvement, because Alan Jackson went on Home Improvement and did this song on Tool Time. <laughs> right. I remember that. I know every word to the song. I don't think so, Tim. Probably because of that. Lone Star's hit Amazed was written as writers Amy Mayo and Chris Lindsay were falling in love with each other. Mayo says their feelings started pouring out as they were writing the famous love ballad. Oh, my. With the, They're writing it together. Wow. I have I, trouble I, sharing my feelings in words sometimes. Can you imagine writing a song lyrically? And what if one of them writes a little more passionately than the other? <laughs> the other one's just not into it's it. It's like, well, you don't love me as much? <laughs> in 1998, Trisha Yearwood and Leanne Rimes both received Grammy nominations for their individual versions of How Do I Live? Rhymes performed the song at the Grammys, and then right after she performed, she stood off stage because that was the and the winner is, and Trish Yearwood won. Crazy. There was a whole Con Air fight about that song. Yeah. Where they had asked Trisha, I believe. Trisha to do it. For the movie. And then. Because Leanne, Leanne had already done it. Yeah, but. But Leanne did it for the movie first, right? And they did, they're not using it? Yeah, they went with Trisha. So they had that? both versions. Crazy. In the same category. Do they hate each other because of that? Or are they just kind of like, whatever, it's over it? I don't know. I. Because we've talked to Trisha about this, right? Yeah. We and have. She didn't seem like it was just too bothered by well, it. Well, she also won. <laughs> okay, that's probably why. She also won the <laughs> Grammy. And you, I think what she said was she remembers Leanne doing the performance and that category is right after the performance and then that's when you know you're about to win because mm. your category is right after you perform. And so they just expected her to win. And then boom. That Leanne Rimes was in the movie, right? Not Trisha. Pretty sure it was Trisha. I can check it. So I barely remember this as a kid. But yeah, that's an uncomfortable thing. We'll come back to that. Little known facts about Chris Gaines who is Garth Brooks' alter mm-hmm. ego. Chris Gaines was in a teen pop group called Crush. And he spent two years undergoing plastic surgery to repair his face after a violent 1992 car crash. Really? Is Chris Gaines on on streaming services? He's nowhere. I would not think, even on YouTube. I would think because it's all Garth. Doesn't Garth just keep that to Garth? I actually like the Chris Gaines stuff. I'm just gonna be honest with you. There's a whole part in this in that Garth documentary that I watched on Netflix. Um, there's a whole segment on it where where they're talking about Chris Gaines and Trisha Yearwood is. Just protecting it and defending it as hard as she can, saying, like, all you guys that hate on Chris Gaines, you've got, you're got you stupid because you didn't listen to Chris Gaines. It was amazing. I remember liking it. <laughs> and then everybody hating on it and being like, what? Yeah. And he did Saturday Night Live as Garth and Chris Gaines. I remember it was that. just confusing for a fan yep, that was a Garth fan. Because you had to explain fan. it. Yeah. If you have to explain it, you're not going to get what they want you to get from it. And that's what Garth said. That was the problem with it. It was just, it was too much of an inside thing for us, and we didn't market it right. Well, it was going to be a movie. Correct. And that, that fell through, and then it just ended up being the music they were going to make for the movie. Yeah. Mike, did you find the Leanne Rimes stuff? Yeah, it was Trisha Yearwood in the movie at the end. So we, what happened with Leanne Rimes then? They initially went to her to record it. She recorded it, and then they went with Trisha's version. Mm. Dirty. That hurts, man. Dina Carter, Strawberry Wine. Was inspired by Boone's Farm Strawberry Hill flavor. Gosh, I know you didn't drink in high school. You don't drink now. But, man, in high school, that Boone's Farm, that was the easiest to buy. And that's what everyone drank. Numerous people passed on the song to record it, including Trisha Yearwood. Speaking of Trisha, she was like, eh, not for me. Wow, what a a smash. Crazy, huh? Early on, Billy Ray Cyrus was dogged by rumors that he used to be a Chippendale dancer. Dude, I think I remember that rumor. It wasn't true. <laughs> but he was so good looking. Well, you believe it. Like, that's a great thing to have as a bad rumor about you. That you're a Chippendale dancer. You got to be, like, ripped and hot to do that. Okay, three dudes here talking about this, but I'll ask you, like, right now, current country artist, 
Who would be a who who would fit that rumor? Chippendale dancer? Yeah. <laughs> Sam, maybe. Sam was. Sam Hunt. Um uh Keith? Couldn't Keith be one? He's a little too small, okay. I think. Okay. What about Dirks? No. A little too small? No, just doesn't have like to be a Chippendale dancer, you gotta be almost cartoonly ripped. Okay. And Keith is thin and in good shape, but like me, I'm thin and in good shape, but I'm not cartoonly yeah. ripped all or right, anything. All right. Uh Sam, maybe like that Riley Green. Oh, he's that's that who dude, I was thinking. That dude's ripped. Yeah. Ripped and just like All right, just leave it there, man. Or like a Dustin, <laughs> Dustin Lynch, maybe. I don't okay, know. I see that though. I do see that. Dustin Lynch kind of plays it off of then. Short career as a Chippendale dancer back in Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> uh, George Strait tried to get the name of his movie Pure Country changed. To? Because he believed it was more than just a country film. Wow. It obviously didn't work. No. Uh, great movie, by the way. Uh, man, I haven't, I've seen it once oh. in a long time ago. So good. Why? It's just it's quotable. Is he good in it? No, he's terrible. Okay. He's not a good actor, but just the storyline and having George in there, it's so good. Garth Brooks' 1991 hit, The Thunder Rolls, was originally recorded by Tanya Tucker. She didn't release it. Brooks included it on No Fences, but fans would have to wait seven years to purchase a version with a third verse. Do you know where the third verse is? Of course. Where? Every, what, what do you mean? Like, what is it? Do you know where you can hear it? Oh, no. Um, you can do it. In a music video? No. Brooks included it on No Fences, which yeah, is where we heard sure. it first, but the third verse wasn't in this version. Oh, where did we get to hear it first? Live. We That's heard right. it live. Is it Central Park or what was it? Mm -hmm. The Double Live record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. New York. Every light is burning. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. What are you talking about? The third verse. Oh, I don't know. Okay. That's where she shoots him. Or he, sh yeah, he shoots her. Willie Nelson's 1992 album, The IRS Tapes, Who Will Buy My Memories, was recorded to help settle his massive tax debt and was originally only available through phone order. <laughs> Back in the day. Uh -huh. uh, I got great reviews from critics. He was able to pay a bunch of his debt back. How awesome is that? You owe a lot of money to the, to, to the government. Let me just make an album real quick and we'll just take care of it. Alan Jackson's Chattahoochee was inspired by a book about the Chattahoochee River and Sidney Lanier's poem, Song of the Chattahoochee. That one's not that interesting. Is it, is it the same storyline of just like a lot it's, of living and live by love? <laughs> as long as there's a snow cone in there, I feel good. <laughs> they talk about yeah, great no. snow cone. Originally, Garth Brooks hit The Dance had a very different set of lyrics. Writer Tony Arata said that those were lost in a move and never re recovered. Oh, wow. The version fans know today was inspired by the movie Peggy Sue Got Married. Wow. The original, he doesn't even know where they are anymore. Crazy. That's, I like those, man. Those are good. Yeah. And most of them I didn't know. I'd kind of heard a little stuff about mm -hmm. it, but really didn't know there. All right. There you go. And that's why that was the motivation as to our guest this week. Hey guys, it's Bobby Bones. Welcome to the channel. If you're new to the channel, subscribe and then go check it out. A lot of artists, a lot of songwriters, a lot of music. Welcome to the Bobbycast channel.